Chapter 11 You are listening at NovelFull.audio. That's right, Tingren still has a month until the college entrance exam. This stage is very important to him, so I hope that you can help him a lot in the near future. Living here is the most convenient, Dot Hua Tingshen spoke calmly, but she lost her composure when she heard it. No, Mr. Hua, I'm just a student too, I have to live in a dormitory. Moreover, it's very far from our school, so it's inconvenient for me to come and go. I can help you discuss the problem of accommodations in your school. If you don't want to go to school far, I can also send you a car. These are not a problem. No need, I mean. It is inappropriate for a single man and woman to live together. This is illegal cohabitation. Hua Tingshen laughed disdainfully. I did not realize that Teacher Wen's thoughts were so dirty. Could it be that Teacher Wen likes Tingren? Mr. Hua, your thoughts are filthy because of this. Tingren is only my student. Then do you like me? Without even thinking about it, she firmly retorted, of course not. Since you don't like us two brothers, then what do you have to be afraid of? Teacher Wen, I think I still have to remind you that you were the one who took the initiative that night. You. Her face flushed red. You are a man. I don't believe that you can't retaliate. Heh, the Miss One probably doesn't understand men, that's why you don't know that most men would not reject a woman who takes the initiative to throw herself at her, unless she is a useless man. Because of what he had said, her face had turned completely red. It was hard to tell if it was due to embarrassment or anger. Hua Tingshen ignored her embarrassment and continued, speaking of which, I'm a bit curious. Gao Moran and that Bai Nancheng, did they not have that kind of ability? Otherwise, why would they let you leave your first time behind for me? What nonsense are you spouting? Wen Qin panicked. How did he know Gao Moran, and why did he mention her brother? You're not investigating me, are you? Yesterday, I personally saw you having fun in the rain with Gao Moran, and today, you are at the same place as Bai Nancheng. It seems that Teacher Wen has underestimated your ability. She glared at him. It was Hua Tingshen's first time meeting a woman that wasn't afraid of him. She was like a wild cat that was ready to attack at any time. What? There's nothing more to say. When Qin gritted her teeth, I am not familiar with Mr. Hua to the point where I have to share secrets. Also, you promised me that you would keep this a secret. Of course, I've never told anyone about it. You slept with me before, so you're the person involved, aren't you? Wen Qing heaved a sigh of relief. She reminded herself that she had to be kind. She had to be kind. She had to endure it. Then what do you mean by flipping through old debts? I'm just rebutting your words based on your improper remarks. You're not the only outsider living under this roof, illegal cohabitation is not suitable for use here. You're like the other people I hire, I'll provide you with food and lodging, you're responsible for teaching Tingren well here, that's all. At the door, Hua Tingren pushed the door open and walked in. Hua Tingshen stood up and walked towards the door. The matter of teacher when staying here has already been discussed. You guys can go to class. Wen Qin was speechless. How did they come to an agreement? He had decided on his own. However, after thinking about it. Forget it, she pla ed to move out from the dorm anyway. Seeing how Hua Tingshen hated her, he wasn't afraid that she would pounce at him, so what was there to be afraid of? It was a good time for him to spend the next month in search of a place to stay. Chapter 12 You are listening at NovelFull.audio After finishing Tingren's tutoring, she rushed all the way back to Tianyi City. Bai Nancheng had already ordered. She sat down and Bai Nancheng asked, Are you tired? She gulped down two mouthfuls of water. What I'm teaching is what I know. Furthermore, I'm only teaching while sitting. How can I get tired? Little girl, don't you know how to complain? I'm not suffering. Bro, don't always think that I'm the only one in the world who's pitiful. Actually, I'm pretty good. 
she had a smile on her face and was eating happily. Eat slower, no one is going to fight with you for it. She laughed. You won't be able to win against me. I'll eat them all. And, eat it all then. If it's not enough, I'll give you a bit more. Look at how thin you are now. If Auntie was still alive, I'd die from the heartache. When she mentioned her mother, she sighed. Brother. All right, all right, I won't say any more. You can eat. Bai Nanqing gave her food from time to time. The two of them looked at each other and smiled. She felt very happy. Right at this moment, a shadow appeared beside them, blocking their line of sight. When Qing turned around, and when she saw the face of the woman beside her, she instantly lost her appetite. Bai Nanqing stood up and frowned, Xiao Yu, why are you here? Brother, you can. I came back from abroad and even my own sister didn't care to take a look, so she came over to visit the bastard first. Shut up. Am I wrong? She is a bastard, she is the shame of our mother, and yet you treat her so well. Bai Nanqing said sternly, Bai Yu, please be more respectful when you speak. Bai Yu yelled, Bai Nanqing, in the end, I'm still your blood sister, yet you're shouting at me on behalf of an outsider. Who asked you to be so uncultured? How am I uncultured? Just thinking of how my mother was pointed at and I didn't kill her because of her is already a sign of benevolence on my part. Wen Qin clenched her fists and stood up. She was about the same height as Bai Yu. Miss Bai, please speak with respect. First of all, I don't have a father, so don't force your father on me, I don't care. Furthermore, I have never spent a single cent of your Bai family, nor have I eaten a single grain of profound energy. Even when my mother was ill and in need of money to save her life, I have never gone to your Bai family to beg for it. Her words caused Bai Yu's face to turn green and white. Your existence was a humiliation to me in the first place. That's your idea, not mine. I'm proud to be my mother's daughter. She took a deep breath, grabbed her bag, took out the 1,000 yuan for emergency use, and placed it on the dining table. After shouting, pay the bill, she turned around and left. Bai Nanqing chased after her and stopped her, Xiao Qing, listen to me, Xiao Yu. Bro, don't say any more. Leave some dignity for me. I'm going back first. I have something to call you. Her eyes were misty. She smiled at him, then pulled out her wrist and quickly left. Bai Nanqing turned around and stared at Bai Yu. Are you satisfied now? With that, he left the restaurant. Wen Qing walked along the side of the road for a few hundred meters before finally sitting down on the curb. She liked to watch the traffic because she envied everyone else where they belonged. Mom, I miss you. I miss you. In the traffic, Hua Tingshan saw Wen Qing at first glance. He looked at her for ten minutes after the car had been stuck there for ten minutes. She was like a frozen puppet, her head lowered as she stared at the ground, motionless. He opened the door and got out, walking toward her. A pair of black leather shoes appeared before her eyes. She raised her tear-stained face and frowned. Dot. Chapter 13 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. The instant their gazes met, his expression froze. Dot she turned her head to the side, quickly wiping away the tears on her cheeks and stood up. Mr. Hua, why are you here? She pretended to be calm as she looked at him. Is that your catchphrase? Wen Qing was puzzled for a moment, and it was only then that she realized she seemed to ask him this question every time she saw him. She embarrassedly scratched her forehead, sigh, I was just flabbergasted that I actually ran into a third young master Hua that was revered by everyone in the northern city at the side of the road. Stop saying such official words, what are you doing sitting here? It doesn't seem illegal for me to sit here. Very oying. She panicked, how am I in the way? This is the public road. Seated in the car, you look like a stray cat abandoned on the side of the road. As he said this, her nose soured. 
thinking about it this way, she felt that she was no different from a stray cat. She also had no family, she was also abandoned, and similarly, no one was waiting. A tinge of desolation appeared in her eyes. Then I won't be troubling Mr. Hua, I'll be leaving first. Where are you going? he asked coldly. Follow me to the car. I'm also heading home. Go back. Home. He turned around and walked a few steps. Seeing that she had not caught up to him, he turned his head and coldly asked, Are you not going to leave? My luggage is still at school. You aren't short on anything in the Hua family, so you can pack it up tomorrow. Get in the carriage first. When Qin got into his car for no reason. Coincidentally, the two of them had just closed the car door when the road suddenly began to move. This congestion was as though she had purposely met him by chance, neither too early nor too late, such a coincidence. He said to the driver, there's no need to take a detour, just go straight home. All right, Lord Third. She looked at him. Where were you going just now? If you're busy, put me down first. I can go back by car. I was PLAING to go home. The driver looked at the rearview mirror. Didn't San Yi say he was going to the clubhouse? Hua Tingshen glared at the driver through the rearview mirror. The driver immediately moved his gaze away. He didn't say anything and didn't dare to think too much about it. He just drove back to the mansion obediently. Did something happen? The two of them sat at the back of the car in silence for five minutes before Hua Tingshan opened his mouth. No, I just saw someone driving a luxury car and got stuck on the road. I thought it was Fu Wai. So it turns out that money isn't everything. He was displeased and began to tell lies with his eyes wide open. Did he think that he was a three-year-old child? Then what are you crying for? I'm crying because I'm poor. I don't even have the right to sit in the car and curse at the traffic jams. I don't have a car. Thinking of the thousand yuan she just lost, she felt as if a knife was cutting through her heart. In the future, she would never go out with the rich to eat again. You make it sound like you know how to drive when you have a car. She turned her head and glared at him. This man, did he have to have such a venomous mouth? Driver, do you know how to drive when you're born? The driver laughed, Miss must be joking. When Qing raised her eyebrows and looked at Hua Tingshan provocatively, then it seems that San Yi was born with a strange bone. He was born with a car. The driver nervously swallowed his saliva. This Miss Wen. Was he PLAING to throw away his life? Who was San Yi? How could she dare to take revenge? Chapter 14 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Hua Tingshan squinted at her. She felt guilty for a moment. Hey, I mean, although I have a driver's license, I've never driven a car before. If I really got on the car, I might not be able to drive well. Hua Tingshan snorted coldly. Old Chen, stop the car by the side. Mr. Chen immediately stopped the car. Hua Tingshan's chin slanted forward as he looked at her. Go ahead. Me. She had a guilty conscience, so much so that she unconsciously lowered her voice by a few decibels. Old Chen, get off work. Mr. Chen turned his head to look at him and was a little worried. Before he could say anything, Hua Tingshan's eyes turned cold. What, you didn't hear me? Yes, Master San. Old Chen immediately unbuckled his seatbelt and got off. The instant he closed the door, his gaze met Wen Qing's. It seemed as if he was saying, Miss Wen, you better pray for yourself. After Old Chen left, she looked at him. Mr. Huo, you. Are you joking with me? I'm giving you a chance to prove yourself. I refuse such an opportunity. Then let's spend the night in the car. In any case, the one bragging is not me, and the one who is ashamed to the point of being ashamed is not me. I'm doing this for your own good. Isn't your car worth a lot of money? Furthermore, a high and mighty Mr. Hua like you is still in the car. 
It would be small if you were to crash into it, but if you were to crash into it, wouldn't that be a huge sin on my part? Her flattery was smooth, but he wasn't comfortable with it. It doesn't matter. In the underworld, if you stay with me, you might be able to benefit from my presence in the next life. You might also be someone who is born with strange bones and can drive. The corner of her mouth twitched. Was this man so petty? He didn't think of himself as childish. He just felt unhappy that he had been the target of his hatred. After all, in the entire northern city, no woman would dare to do such a thing. Seeing that he was silent, she pouted. Are you serious? Hurry up. Then. Can you sit in the passenger seat? Why? There's a person beside me. Courage. Sure. Hua Tingshan got out of the car before her and got into the passenger seat. She sat down on the driver's seat with a heavy heart. In his heart, he reminded himself that even if he had to tease the dogs by the side of the road, he shouldn't provoke the person beside him. Just as she started the car and was about to step on the accelerator, he calmly said, this car is less than 10 million. If it breaks down, you just need to pay for it with 50% discount. I gave you a very cheap price, so you don't have to feel too much pressure. Her heart was thumping as she looked at him. You. Are you trying to scare me off? I'm ringing the alarm for you to cherish your life and the hard dot earned money in your wallet. She snorted. I'm not going. I'll stay in the car for the night. This car will be parked here in less than half an hour. There will be people coming to watch and take photos. If you want to be famous, just sit here and take a look. You. She glared at him. Was this man purposely here to harm her? She gritted her teeth. Fine, let's die together. She slowly moved the car to the middle of the street. He smiled and hugged her, don't be too afraid, this car is very good, it won't fall apart after a single collision. Also, even if it really falls apart, you will be able to repay the debt with your body if you don't have any money to pay for it. Your figure is not too bad, I won't refuse to go outside. His words caused her to be shocked as she stepped on the throttle to the end. The car behind him couldn't avoid. With a thud, it kissed the back of Maybach's car. Chapter 15 You are listening at NovelFull.audio She was Stu Edition. Should she? Something had happened with such accuracy. She looked back and saw that the owner of the car behind her hadn't moved. She looked at him, her face filled with fear. What should I do? Is it my responsibility? I stepped on the brakes. So, who let you hit the brakes? Because you scared me. Letting you repay me with your body is just scaring you. When you pounced at me before, why didn't you think that I would be scared by you? She was speechless, at this time, can we not discuss such a topic? What should I do? What should I say when I get down? He didn't pull away from the safety of the car. He's responsible, but he's probably more scared of it than you are. Why? Because of this car, he can't afford it. Stay in the car and don't come out. She nodded. Hua Tingshan got out of the car and walked towards the back. She looked back at the two men and said something to each other. Then, Hua Tingshan took out his wallet and handed over some money. The other person took it and got into the car. The entire process of Hua Tingshan's return took less than three minutes. She asked anxiously, did you lose money? Right. I'll charge it to your account. From now on, you can pay it all at once. Drive the car. She was speechless. You're still asking me to open it. Since you are going to pay for it, why don't you just relax and drive the car back? A single collision is a collision, two collisions is also a collision. If there's no difference, let's go. She was on the verge of tears. Was there a need to comfort others like that? Trembling, she drove the car back to the main entrance of the villa, feeling her entire body stiffen. Hua Tingshan looked at her with a smile, then opened the car door and got out. 
she got out of the car and felt her legs go soft. He looked at her charmingly as he walked into the villa with a smile. Butler Tong personally came out to receive him. Seeing that he had brought Wen Qin back, he hurriedly said. Master San, Miss Wen's room has been arranged. It will be on the first floor of fourth young master's residence. Hua Tingshan stood still and looked at him. Butler Tong was puzzled. Master San, do you have any other orders? Ting Ren is a student who's about to take his college entrance exam. If you let him have an extra person, won't it affect his studies? Yes. I think so. Butler Tong immediately understood what he meant and nodded his head. Hua Tingshan turned around and said as he walked, arrange it with me. I can take care of it for this month. Yes, I'll go back and have someone clean up the room. Wen Qin, who was still standing beside the car, disdained. Was it all right if she didn't want to play with him at all? Also, send this car tomorrow for maintenance. The maintenance fee receipt will be given to the teacher when for safekeeping. All right. Wen Qin curled her lips. A capitalist could drink human blood. That was true. The butler Tong invited her inside. This was her first time entering Hua Tingshan's residence. The overall decoration style is to take the European style, very bright hall comfortable. Butler Tong arranged for her to stay in a room by the stairs before going out. Not long later, Butler Tong knocked on the door and sent her a few sets of clothes. Yes, a few. Furthermore, they were all new clothes that had not been picked yet. She accepted it and thanked the butler Tong. Originally, she thought she wouldn't be able to sleep well after changing locations, but it was very rare. That night, she actually slept exceptionally well. The alarm went off in the morning, and when she woke up, she felt refreshed. When he came out of his room after washing up, Hua Tingshan also came downstairs. Because the room was directly facing the stairs, they bumped into each other. There was a trace of awkwardness on her face. Mr. Hua, good morning. He raised his eyebrows and looked her up and down. Hmm, you really have an appetite today. She wondered what it meant. He charmingly said, this outfit suits your meaning. It's very sexy. She pursed her lips. I'm afraid. No, that's not it. Chapter 16 You are listening at NovelFull.audio She looked down at her clothes. This set of clothes was given to her by Butler Tong yesterday. Everything was covered, so where was the sexy part? Seeing her confused gaze, Hua Tingshan walked towards the dining table with a smile. Butler Tong had already arranged for breakfast to be served. Hua Tingshan said to her, Come over for breakfast. No, I think I'll go to the school cafeteria to eat. In the future, Ting Ren will occasionally eat breakfast with us. While eating, tell him the questions he did not know about last night, so we can make good use of this time. She walked over and sat down. However, Hua Ting Ren didn't come over during the whole breakfast time. Embarrassed, she had breakfast with him and he watched her all morning. After D Er, she left the villa in his car. The driver took her to school and then to the office, because it was on the way. At the school gate, Hua Tingshan said, In the afternoon, I will have Old Chen come to pick you up. No need, I can go by myself. It would be better to save time on the road and spend it in a reasonable place. He really was. Scratch your calculations. Was he going to help her brother enslave her? After class in the afternoon, she went back to her dormitory to pack. After she was done packing, she left a note for Tong Hao in her dorm room before leaving with her luggage. Passing by the school Wudong Road, I came face to face with Gao Moran. The two of them saw each other, and the path did not diverge, so she could only brace herself and continue forward. Gao Moran looked at her with resentment in his eyes. He stopped in front of her. Seeing that she was about to continue walking, he grabbed her wrist. Wen Qin, don't you have anything to say to me? Her expression was cold. No. No. 
Fine, let me say it, I've already heard it from my mother. Heh, Wen Qing, you can do it. You actually used me to exchange for a job. Nav Om she frowned slightly. Actually, this is the purpose for you to be together with me right? You've never liked me, and you only want to use me, right? Wen Qing sighed and did not respond to him. She wanted to pull her hand away from his wrist, but he wouldn't let her free. Let go. Do you also feel ashamed that I have seen through your motives? Didn't you think I'd know sooner or later? The person who gave you the chance to work was my mom. Gao Moran yelled in pain. She looked at him, her face aggrieved and angry. He said coldly, Why, you can't speak, can you? Wen Qing, why did you use me? Your mother has talked to me countless times, and the topic is always the same. If you break up with my son, I can let you stay in school to teach. Her voice was not loud, but he could hear it clearly. Before this, I had always believed that I would work hard enough and study well enough, and that I would be completely qualified to stay by myself. Even if I knew that the people in power didn't like me, I might still be able to get out. Gal Moran, you know, I even thought of marrying you. Even if I was kicked out of school by your mother, I could still find another job. However, you personally gave me a resounding slap when I saw. The moment I saw that scene, guess what I was thinking. Chapter 17 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Gal Moran looked at her in pain. He didn't know any of this. Her eyes were cold, I was thinking, you destroyed me. If I wasn't with you, then I could have relied on my own strength to stay in school. But because I was with you, even if I stayed in school, it would have become dishonorable. Because of you, I suffered humiliation that I didn't have to endure. Your mother said that I was an orphan and not worthy of your Gao family. Do you know how sad I am? I am not an orphan. I have a mother. Why am I an orphan? At the end, she clenched her fists in grievance. He felt like he had been slapped in the face. I'm sorry, Wen Qing. Really, I'm sorry, I don't know about this. I apologize for my mother's actions and words. Why didn't you tell me about this before? She took a breath to calm herself down. What can I tell you? You want to go home and fuck your mother. Let you be an unfilial son because of me. Let you break up with your family for me. Or if I told you, wouldn't you have gone to bed with Song Roa? Song Roa and I were just having a misunderstanding. I don't know why, Gao Moran closed his eyes with a face full of regret. Wen Qing, tell me, how do you want to forgive me? As long as you tell me, no matter what the price, I'm willing to do it. Her gaze landed on a direction far away from the road, where Song Rua was R-U-I-N-G towards. She looked in that direction and sneered. Gal Moran turned around and saw Song Rua. He frowned. Wen Qing, I. Dot Song Rua ran to their side and held Wen Qing's hand. Wen Qing, it's all my fault. Please don't blame him anymore. He's really pitiful. He really. Gal Moran shouted, Song Rua, stop causing trouble for me. Go, I beg you. Hurry up and leave. Song Rua knelt down in front of Wen Qing with a thump. I'm the one who's despicable. I liked him first. I know I've let you down, but... Song Rua, Wen Qing interrupted her a UAL drama. You tell me, Gao Moran doesn't love me anymore, he loves you. Song Rua, Wen Qing interrupted her a UAL drama. You tell me, Gao Moran doesn't love me anymore. Song Rua stiffened. I didn't say that. Wen Qing, I know you hate me, but don't slander me. Regardless of whether you admit it or not, I have to tell you that Gao Moran is not a person like this. Perhaps he will have a different relationship with someone, but he will not fall in love with someone just because of a person's body. To me, he might be a trash, but he is not a pervert or a hooligan. Also, stop acting with me. As a person, my heart isn't very good, 
so I'm not willing to cooperate with your acting. If you like to kneel, then continue kneeling. After she finished, she turned around and dragged her suitcase away. Song Rua clenched her fists. Damn it. That slut, Wen Qing, she was going to drag her down with her even if she died. Seeing that Gao Moran wanted to chase after Wen Qing, she reached out her hand to hold Gao Moran's hand and cried, M.O. Ran, I really didn't say that. I didn't. Gao Moran shook her off, I will never love you. I love Wen Qing. I know very well what kind of effort I put in to win her heart. So, I love her. I will love her for the rest of my life. Gao Moran left Song Rua behind and left. Song Rua slowly stood up and wiped the tears off her face. She looked at Wen Qing who had already walked far away and gritted her teeth. Wen Qing, you just wait and see. I won't let you go. Chapter 18 You are listening at NovelFull.audio On Saturday, she would study with Hua Tingren in the morning and give supplementary lessons to another student in the afternoon. After exiting the student's house, Butler Tong called her and asked when she would be home to eat. She looked at the time and said, Butler Tong, I won't be going back to eat tonight. Butler Tong looked at Hua Tingshen who was sitting at the dining table, that. When will you be back? I'll send a car to pick you up. No need. I have to work Saturday night. I'll be busy until very late. I'll just have to go back by myself then. After hanging up, Butler Tong looked at Hua Tingshan. Master San, Miss Wen still has to work, and won't be back until very late. Hua Tingshan hugged his chest. After sitting for a while, he said, investigate where she's working from. He wanted to be sure that this woman was trying to avoid him on purpose. 9 p.m. Nighttime bar. Wen Qing was wearing a suit and was shuttling through the crowd. She was ordering wine, delivering orders, and her legs were nimble. Amongst the crowd, she was exceptionally eye-dot-catching. She had a tall ponytail, a pretty face, and a slim figure. Even though she was wearing a conservative work uniform, she could still be noticed at first glance. It was because of this that she was often stopped by guests who did not follow the rules and asked how much they wanted for a night, just like now. She glanced at him, as usual, with the smile of a signboard, looking at him. Sir, I'm sorry. I'm just a waiter here. Pfft, what are you pretending to be so noble for? This bro needs you to accompany me tonight. Then. Sir, I'm afraid you'll have to go for a sex change operation first. What do you mean, the young guest said, glaring at him. Her smile was still kind. No, I'm telling you, I like women. The man was Stu Ed for a moment. According to her past experiences, the other party would usually throw her off in disgust at this kind of situation. But this time, the opponent clearly didn't play the same card. He pulled her forward. She stumbled and fell into the soft sofa. The man stepped forward, blocking her from standing up. Now that you mention it, I'm more interested in you. I haven't slept with Lisa before. It just so happens that I'll start from you today. People were coming and going, but no one helped. It was as if he had long since gotten used to this kind of thing. The man walked up and propped her up on the sofa. His eyes were filled with an aura of scoundrel. Little girl, you've met me today. It's your bad luck. You've offended someone you shouldn't have. He stepped forward. Seeing that he wanted to kiss her, she raised her hand and slapped him. This would infuriate the other party. The man raised his hand and was about to counterattack when his wrist was grabbed. The man was enraged. He turned his head around and shouted, who dares to risk his life? Before he could finish his sentence, the other party had already viciously punched him in the face. The man fell to the ground, clutching his aching chin. Before anyone could react, they were dragged out by a few strong men. Wen Qing, who was half dot lying on the floor, was Stu Ed as she looked at Hua Tingshen, who was filled with hostility. 
Hua Tingxian raised his eyebrows, did you want to ask me why I'm here? She came back to her senses and stood up, looking at him. She was indeed very surprised to see him here. Hua Tingxian hugged her and looked at her. After ten seconds, he reached out two fingers and poked her lightly in the head. I'm finding out more and more that the teacher one is truly an enigmatic existence. Chapter 19 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Wen Qin didn't respond to Hua Tingxian's words. Instead, she seemed to have thought of something and ran out. Hua Tingxian followed him out of curiosity. Wen Qin walked to the door and saw that the man who had just bullied her was still being controlled by the person outside the door. She walked over and said with a cold expression, Who asked you to come? When the man looked at the man behind Wen Qin, his eyes were filled with fear. Wen Qin said, As long as you tell the person who ordered you, I'll let you off. Really? Will you really let me go? Since you're so afraid, you should know who the person behind me is. Right now, other than trusting me, do you have any other methods to save yourself? The man hurriedly said, It was a little girl who found me yesterday and gave me your picture. She gave me a thousand dollars to scare you in the bar today. She also said that if I could get something that would be bad for you, she could give me more money. What's her name? I don't know. It's the first time I've seen that girl. Wen Qing thought for a moment. She took out her cell phone, found a photo and handed it to her. Is it this person? The man took a glance and frowned. At that time, he was wearing a hat and mask, so I could only see his eyes. They seemed a little similar, but I'm not sure. Is the other party about the same height as me? Is his voice very thin? Yes, she's about the same height. Her voice is very soft. When Qing clenched her fist, a trace of resentment filling her eyes. The man said, I've told you everything I know. Please let me go. When Qing turned around and looked at Hua Tingxian. Let him go. Are you sure, that Wen Qing didn't say anything and only nodded? Hua Tingxian walked in front of the man. Leave the northern city yourself, don't let me see you again, scram. He motioned for them to let the man go. After the man thanked him, he quickly crawled and rolled away. Hua Tingxian walked up to Wen Qing. It looks like you already know who wants to harm you. She was silent. Do you want me to help you take care of him? She looked at him. No need. I will settle my own grudge myself. His lips curled up into a cold smile. This sort of woman was truly rare. Mr. Hua, today. Thank you. As I said, I don't like to be thanked verbally. Then. How about I buy you a cup of coffee, even if it's a thank that you gift for letting me take advantage of you just now. A fox taking advantage of a tiger's might. It was a new word. If you insist, then I'll reluctantly go with you. She was speechless. Actually, he didn't have to be so reluctant, okay. Then Mr. Hua, please wait for a moment. I will go in to change and collect my salary. I will be out very soon. Wen Qin ran back to the bar. Within ten minutes, she had changed into her own clothes and ran out. Hua Tingxian asked, where do you want to go drink? Mr. Hua, I'll bring you to a good place. Seeing her mysterious look, Hua Tingxian smiled, feeling some anticipation. They got on the car, when Qin found the address on her phone and gave it to Mr. Chen. The Mr. Chen circled around and drove the car to the sea. He looked at the navigation system on her phone and wondered, Miss Wen, did I go the wrong way? That's right, it's here, she looked at Hua Tingxian and smiled. Mr. Hua, you can get off now. Hua Tingxian looked at her and frowned. There was no coffee shop here. Chapter 20 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Wen Qin looked at him with a smile in her eyes. Mr. Hua, please. She got out of the car first. Hua Tingxian looked around to confirm before getting off. Since she's already here, let's see what kind of tricks she's playing. 
When Qin walked past the roadside rocks and headed for a huge U-dot-shaped boulder not far from the beach. When he reached the center of the U-dot-shaped stone, he saw that there were three flat rocks inside, arranged in an ingenious ma or according to the size of the stone. It was just like a stone table and a stone chair. The sea breeze outside was very strong, but here, there was only a light breeze. It was very comfortable. She sat down on a flat rock and switched on the flashlight. She took two plastic plastic disposable paper cups out of her bag and set them on the big stone table. Then he took out the thermos and two packs of instant coffee and poured them into the cup. She skillfully brewed the coffee and handed it to Hu Tingshan, who was still standing there. He did not move, but said lightly, Is this the place where you want to buy me coffee? Dot, yeah, doesn't Mr. Hu feel that this place is good? He raised his eyebrows. He didn't know since when his face had become so worthless. This is my secret base, it's my first time bringing someone else here. He took the coffee and sat down on the other side. It wasn't dark because of the moonlight and the faint light from her cell phone. You said this is your secret base. Well, my mother brought me here. As this sea has not been developed, basically no one will come here. Every time I feel bad, I will come here to sit for a while. This place is very well healed. She pointed to the top of her head. Hua Tingshan raised his head, the night sky was very beautiful. As long as you sit here with the sea breeze, listen to the sound of the sea, and look at the beautiful night sky, I will feel that life is still pretty good, and the future is still pretty promising, don't you think? He raised his eyebrows. Not really. She shrugged. It seems capitalists don't think the same as poor people like me. No wonder I'm poor. He laughed out loud, a rare laughter coming out of his mouth. She looked at him in shock. Mr. Hua, so you know how to laugh. He rolled his eyes at her. Is there anyone in this world who can't laugh? But I've never seen you laugh like this before. Are you familiar with me? That's true. No, she said, shrugging her shoulders, feeling a little self-conscious about the subject. She took a sip of her coffee and looked up at the night sky. The surroundings suddenly quieted down. Hua Tingshan tried to take a sip of coffee and frowned. What is this stuff that's so bad to drink? She looked at him. Mr. Hua, you. It can't be that you've never had instant coffee before, right? Indeed not. She laughed. I'm sorry, but I forgot again that you are a capitalist. Next time. No, 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 from now on, I better not treat Mr. Hua to food. After all, we are not on the same level, and there will be no more examples. As she spoke, she placed the cup of coffee in front of him in front of her and said, I'll drink this instead. He quickly pulled his coffee cup back to his side. I just said it was bad. When did you say I wasn't going to drink it? She felt a bit awkward. Everything was fine, why did she get angry? Do capitalists have regular menopause? Just now at the bar, why are you so sure that the person was ordered? <laughs>